things about men that are incomprehensible. When the heart in their chest fails in agony, they are as brave as warriors. When they have a cold, they are as miserable as beaten children. Every sneeze is like a death throw. A man can examine his sword, unsheathing it, sheathing it again, with a look of wonderment, as if a simple sword and scabbard were the most complex machine in the world. I have seen a man fly into a rage at a sticking door, and he was sober at the time. I have seen a drunk man gaze at a fly crawling on his hand. He had the look of a composing poet. A man of noble birth, whose ancestors won wars and were befriended by emperors may stamp his foot and bite his knuckle like a petulant boy. I'm a very busy man, Lieutenant. I understand that, of course, Lord Tadanobu. I will make this as brief as possible. <sighs> and what exactly is this? An interrogation? No, my lord. Think of it as a conversation. I have little time for conversation. It is at the Emperor's request. His Majesty directed you to question me. No, not directly, my lord. No word plays, Shanagan. What the Emperor has requested is a poem from me before sunset today. As I said, my lord, I do know how busy you are, and as Shonagan said, let us converse for a little while. About what? I'm as baffled by these crimes as you seem to be. The entire palace claims to be equally so. Claims? It is my duty to dispel that bafflement. And what is Shonagan's duty to write down what I say in her little secret book? My duty is to assist the lieutenant in any way I can, again at the request of the... Leave us. Don't look to him. I will converse with the lieutenant alone. Yes, my lord. Lieutenant. Lords of the palace are not accustomed to being questioned by the sons of furniture makers, however deserving their new rank and however polite to their conversation. My father raised me always to be polite, sir, long before I joined the imperial police. And is this well-mannered insolence? Uh, no, sir. However far I have been raised from a humble background, I know your rank is immeasurably above mine and deserving of all respect. Indeed. It is, in fact, my Lord's eminence that is of interest to me. That is, the knowledge that eminence brings. Just how subtle are you, Yukonari? It is my Lord who is a master of subtlety. I am a great admirer of your work. You've read my work. Every line I've been able to get hold of. And if you will indulge me, my Lord... In a few minutes' conversation, you will be free to complete your verses for His Majesty. You will grant me that freedom, will you? The gods grant poets their freedom. And I can only hope I will be permitted to read your new lines. My Majesty is anxious. She tries to pretend otherwise, but I can tell. No one knows Her Majesty better than you, Tazami. She pretends anger, pretends resolution, but she is anxious. These are disturbing crimes. Has she spoken to you about her cares? Only with looks, a raising and dropping of the hand. She has the Emperor to share her anxiety with now. Yes. That must be for you... I take delight in their majesty's closeness. Of course. The emperor showed us another of his puzzles last night. I'm sorry I missed it. I don't think you could have solved this one, Shonagan. He had two snakes, spilled them from a basket onto the floor of the throne room. Each was two feet long, their markings identical. The question was which was male and which was female. Then he took a long twig and held it close to their tails. Only one snake moved. That one, said the Emperor, is the female. The Emperor, I'm sure, was correct. My Majesty detests snakes. They were perfectly harmless creatures. I assured Her Majesty of that. Huh. Naramasa, we didn't know you were there behind the screen. I have only just come in. We did not hear you. Ah, Shonagon, you are so preoccupied with other things, like your investigation. I hope you do not neglect your other duties, including your religious observance. Your sermons and scripture readings, Naramasa, they repeat and repeat in my mind. And our visiting lieutenant, does he make progress? It is slow, difficult. He is very thorough. I look forward to his speaking to me. Before this is over, make no mistake, he will have need of a priest and an exorcist. 
You speak of my eminence, my knowledge. How can my knowledge of high places help you in a case of petty theft? The taking of the Empress's loot can hardly be described as petty. The act of a thief who has gone mad with ambition. I do not think so, my lord. And what do you think? That the crimes are in some way symbolic. Symbolic of what? Well, I have no idea. Which is why I wanted to speak with you. Explain. The captain of the guard said he could not imagine a servant stealing his dagger. Can we imagine a servant stealing from the Empress? Are you suggesting that someone of rank is guilty? Questions of rank within the palace are a mystery to me. When even a cat can be a noble. And a ship. A ship? Yes, given the rank of governor because it handled so superbly. Many years ago, the country palace of a former emperor was haunted. The ghost was given high rank to placate it, to keep it quiet. These are mysteries, Lieutenant. They cannot be unravelled by a policeman. I believe these crimes are intended to cause confusion and unrest in the palace, which means they are aimed at the Emperor. Insane. But that's where the symbolism points. They have escalated from kitchen scales to something precious to the Empress. What next? I know how the Emperor is loved. Loved and divinely appointed. Of course, but one hears of other powers. Power? The Chancellor, the Fujiwara family, unrest, schism. Enough. By all the gods, man. Do you have any idea what you are saying? Perhaps not, my lord. Forgive me. I wish you all success with your poem. Your lieutenant will speak to me, of course. I am sure he will, Naramasa. Although I, I believe he still suspects some human motive, he has not yet suggested a supernatural explanation. He would do well to consider it. A crime against the Empress is blasphemous. So, too, would be a crime against the Emperor. The Emperor? Unthinkable. Nothing is unthinkable. To the women of these times, so it would seem. But blasphemy. Could a demon be capable of such a thing? Surely it is a sin of humanity. The demon takes possession of a human and causes that man, or woman, of course, to commit the sin. Of course, I bow to you, Naramasa, in matters of theology. You are a clever woman, Shonagon. Clever in the ways of these times. You write poetry... You engage in debate and more frivolous things with lords of the palace. You even help with police investigations. I hope you'll still find time to pray. Oh, indeed. I pray for their majesties. I pray for my friends and myself. I pray for you, Naramasa. And I pray the lieutenant will be able to cleanse this poison from our mists. The man is dangerous. In what way? He has been saying outrageous things. To you, my lord? He spoke in outrageous terms about the Emperor. He is greatly concerned that His Majesty may in some way be the target of this madman. Oh, I know, in some symbolic way, and this lieutenant might be a madman himself. He also spoke of power, of unrest and schism. To speak of such things is to invite them. Do you doubt Yukonari's loyalty to the Emperor? He spoke of the Chancellor. He named the Fujiwara family. Other powers. Is that not outrageous? Dangerous. But he is here by the will of His Majesty, who seems to admire him very much. As you do. I think he is clever, shrewd. And thorough, so you said before. These things that he's been saying, I think that they are part of his method. A method that might lead to his losing his head. He questions, he probes, he is convinced that these crimes are not the work of a simple, greedy, petty thief. And surely he's right. The Empress's own loot has been stolen. Shalakon, you are following this man onto dangerous ground. Their majesties have ordered me to follow him. And you begin to enjoy the journey. Well, there's a certain... Certain what? Exhilaration? The thrill of the chase? Perhaps. Yes, you see yourself as a shrewd and thorough huntress, and you are infatuated. Infatuated? With that image of yourself. And with that man. No, my lord. With a farmer's son, the son of a man who made bedsteads for sale. You know I don't mind you toying with such a creature, but don't lose your heart. My heart is lost to no one, Lord Tadanobu. Except, of course, to my Empress. Good. We don't want your head lost along with his. Lord Tadanobu said you have a secret book 